800,000 years ago in South China, a Homo erectus tribe made camp in a subtropical forest. The tribe are processing a deer that they have killed in the nearby wetlands, when suddenly, a flock of birds are startled and launch out of a nearby tree. The tribe are now alert. They hear branches snapping and leaves crunching. Just like a movie, the dense vegetation parts and out steps a giant ape. Reluctant to step out into the spotless area where the Erectus tribe have removed all the vegetation for the camp, the ape stares curiously at the tribe from the tree line. The male members of the tribe grip their spears ready to defend, while the women move the children behind them and to the opposite side of the camp. The great ape's eyes are flickering everywhere, taking in as much information as possible. This is an intelligent animal and is learning what to make of these tribesmen. After a tense few minutes, the ape then turns and begins to walk back into the forest, parting the dense undergrowth as it continues its search for food. The ape is a male Gigantopithecus, living a solitary life. He was searching for food when he stumbled across an animal he'd never seen before. Because of his great intelligence, he was naturally curious and wanted to investigate the tribe. This is a scene of what life was like in South China 800,000 years ago. Gigantopithecus is an animal that has blown the minds of people for generations. Its gigantic size has captured the public's imagination and fueled the fire of the Bigfoot myths. Join me today as we explore the mysterious life of this giant primate and also why it disappeared off the face of the planet. Before we begin the video, what other ancient animals or topics would you like to see on the channel? I write down every single suggestion, so yours may just be the next video. Enjoy. Gigantopithecus lived roughly 2 million to 350,000 years ago in what is now South China. Gigantopithecus stood 3 meters tall and weighed 500 kg or 1,100 pounds. Gigantopithecus is actually a genus and is occupied by one species, Gigantopithecus blackie. As far as we are aware, Gigantopithecus is native to China, but potential identifications have also been made in Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. In 1956, the first mandible and more than 1,000 teeth were found in Liang Che, and numerous more remains have since been found in at least 16 sites. Only teeth and four mandibles are known currently, and it is thought that other parts of the skeleton were consumed by porcupines. At one point, Gigantopithecus was argued to be a hominin, but it is now thought to be closely related to orangutans classified in the subfamily Pongonae. The species may have also been sexually dimorphic, with males much bigger than females. Most primates are sexually dimorphic, with different biological characteristics such as body size, canine tooth size, skull structure, skeletal dimensions, colour and markings, and vocalisation. Sexual dimorphism is especially prominent in gorillas and orangutans, which is why paleontologists lean towards the Gigantopithecus males being much larger. Gigantopithecus appears to have been a generalist herbivore of C3 forest plants, a thick enamel functioning to resist foods with abrasive particles such as stems, roots and tubers. Some teeth bear traces of fig family fruits, which may have been an important dietary component. Due to the very limited fossil evidence of Gigantopithecus, we can only speculate what its life was like. But with the teeth we have, we are able to draw some conclusions about their diet and growth. Gigantopithecus molars have a high cavity rate of 11%, which could mean fruit was commonly included in its diet. The molars from Gigantopithecus cave frequently exhibit pitting enamel hypoplasia, where the enamel improperly forms with pits and grooves. This can be caused by malnutrition during growth years, which could point to periodic food shortages, though it can also be induced by other factors. Specimen PA1601-1 from Yangliang Cave shows evidence of tooth loss of the right second molar before the eruption of a neighbouring third molar, which suggests this individual was able to survive for a long time despite impaired chewing abilities. 
The supposed high levels of sexual dimorphism could indicate relatively intense male-on-male -male competition. Though considering the upper canine only projected slightly farther than the cheek teeth, Canine display was probably not very important in aggressive behaviour, unlike modern non-human apes. Gigantopithecus remains are generally found in what were subtropical evergreen broadleaf forests in South China. Carbon and oxygen isotope analysis of early Pleistocene enamel suggests Gigantopithecus inhabited dense, humid, close canopy forests. QQ Cave featured a mixed deciduous and evergreen forest, dominated by birch, oak and chickapin as well as several low-lying herbs and ferns. Adult Gigantopithecus likely had no predators, but juveniles could have potentially fallen victim to tigers, leopards and black bears. Of course, these predators would have taken any opportunity to hunt an adult when they were old and weak. Gigantopithecus appears to have gone extinct about 300,000 years ago, possibly due to the southward retreat of forests and prime habitat throughout the Middle Pleistocene, caused by increasing seasonality intensifying winter and summer monsoon strength, and regional climate cooling or wetting. Savanna would remain the dominant habitat in Southeast Asia until the late Pleistocene. It has been speculated that the human species Homo erectus also contributed to its extinction. Human activity in southern China is known as early as 800,000 years ago, but does not become prevalent until after the extinction of Gigantopithecus, so it is unclear if the pressures such as competition over resources or overhunting were factors. There is some relatively recent evidence, however, that suggests Homo erectus arrived in China 1.7 million years ago. Pushing the date even further back is the research published in 2018, dating a supposed Homo erectus tool to 2.2 million years ago. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any feedback in the comments below. See you in the next one.